Hello class, this is a video on negative indices. So the first thing we're going to learn is how do indices become negative in the first place? So let's take a look at this example. If we have some index, let's take for example, x to the power of 5 divided by x to the power of 7. We know from our index laws that if they have the same base, they these indices subtract. So it's going to become x to the 5 minus 7, which so that's equal to that, which will equal, which will give us x to the negative 2. So this is how indices become negative in the first place. And I'd like to show you how this will eventually equal, and you'll understand why it's equal to 1 over x squared. This is our end goal for now. We're going to learn why this is. So let's take a look at this example again. But we'll, we'll rewrite it without the division symbol. So it will look like this. x to the 5 divided by x to the power of 7. Okay. Now if we did this with expanded notation, we would have x times x. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 divided by 7 of x, 7 x's, so it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we know that for every factor on the numerator, that is on the denominator, we can cross them off. So watch, we have 1 on top, 1 on the bottom, 1 on the top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, which leaves us with 2 in the bottom. And we know that these have indices of 1 and that they're going to add. So on the numerator, it's not going to be 0 because really we have times 1 here, but we don't include times 1 because why should we? Because times 1 is itself. But since we know that it's multiplication, we have a 1 remaining. So it's going to be 1 over. These have all been cancelled, which leaves us with 2. 1, 2, x squared. So that's how we get. That's why this is equal to this. So now, if you're asked the question, turn or change into into um, into a, a an expression with with positive indices so let's take a take three examples of this let's take Example A, if they give us a question of x to the power of negative 2. B, they give us a question of x to the power of negative 5. And just to confuse ourselves a little bit, see if we have 3 x to the power of negative 4. Okay, so now... We already seen the answer for this. Anything with a negative indice will become 1 over the base raised to the power of what it was as a negative. So if it's a 2, it becomes a positive 2. Similarly with this one, if this is a 5, this, this one will become 1 over x to the 5. Now here's where it gets tricky, and I'll show you and I'll break this down a little bit further. This expression is actually 3 times x to the negative 4. 
which will give us 3 times x, well that's 1 over x to the 4, which gives us 3 over x to the 4. Okay, so I hope you can see how <clears throat> if you have a 3 in front of a negative indice like this, it's going to be 3 over x to the 4. This is a few more examples. If we have, let's say, question C, D, they have 4 um, x to the negative 3 y times y. This is where it gets tricky. Now, only the negative index, only the negative index is the one that will go into the denominator. So it's going to be 4 y because these do not have negative indices and x is the only one that does. Hence why it's 4y over x to the power of 3. We'll get a little bit more complicated now. If we have, um, this time with a bracket, 3a squared b to the negative 2 outside negative 4 Now, since this negative 4 index is applying to everything in the brackets, it's actually everything's going to become the denominator. So it's going to be 1 over 3a squared b to the negative 2. We're going to close that bracket. It becomes a positive 4. But look, we have a negative 2. 2 on the denominator. Now, here it gets a little confusing, but the short end of it, the short cut, is that if it's a negative in the denominator, it will just go into the numerator. numerator. So it will become b squared over 3a squared 4. Okay. So now we'll take a look at how these affect. So negative indices, indices affecting numbers. Okay, so let's take a look at base two for now at the moment, okay? Let's take a look at, for example, um, two to the power of two. We know that is two times two. So we know that that is four. And if we have, hang on, sorry. If we have two to the power of three, that is 2 times 2 times 2 in case in case you forget that's actually 2 times 2 times 2 which is equal to 2 times 2 is 4 4 times 2 is 8 and we can keep going on like this so we'll just do the next one 2 to the power of 4 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 which is 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. Now what happens, I'm going to put it to the side here, if it becomes 2 to the negative 2, 2 to the power of negative 2. Mm. So well, we know that since, I'll do it here in the top right corner, since we know x to the power of negative n, becomes 1 over x of the same um, same power. So what if this were a 2, that becomes a 2, but it's just on the denominator. If that were a 3, this n is also a 3. It's just on the, on the denominator. The exact same thing happens to two numbers. So it's going to become 1 over 2 to the power of 2. 
and if we were to evaluate this, it would just become 1 over 4 because 2 to the power of 2 is 4. Can you see the pattern here? Can you see the relationship? Okay, we'll do it again. 2 to the power of negative 3. Well, that becomes 1 over 2 to the power of negative 3. And can you guess what, what this is going to be? Well, if 2 to the power of 3 is 8, 2 to the power of negative 3 is 1 over 8. And finally, 2 to the power of negative 4. The exact same thing happens. It would be 1 over 2 to the positive 4 equals 1 over 16. And such is the pattern. Take a look. 2 squared is 4. 2 to the power of negative 2 is 1 over 4. Can you see the pattern? 2 to the power of 3, 2 to the power of negative 3, 1 over 8, and so on. And this, I'll just put dot, dot, dot. This pattern continues. So, if you know your, um, your, your powers for any base, you can easily find what it is if it were a negative. So let's just take a few examples here now. Let's take a look at um, evaluate evaluate the following. If someone said if they ask three to the power of negative three. Well, that's equal to one over three to the power of three, which is one over twenty seven. And in case you don't know your um, powers, that's fine. All you're going to have to use is your calculator. So let's go again. If you have B, if we have 4 to the power of negative 5, well, I'm actually going to use the calculator for this just in case you don't know. That will become 1 over 4 over positive 5 which will give us, take a look, whoops, oh, we can't see that in the shadow, then light, yes, 1 over 4 to the power of 5, 4 to the power of 5, which gives us 1 over 1024, which gives us 1 over 1024. Let's make it a little bit trickier now. Let's say we have question C. We have 2 to the power of negative 3x. Well, we know only the, only the negative indices will go in the denominator. So which means it will be x because x has a positive 1. That stays in the numerator in the top it becomes like that because only this one goes into the denominator and I know that 2 to the power of 3 becomes x over 8 just 2 to the power of 3 is 8 let's make it a little bit more complicated now a b c d I'll stick to powers of 2 to the power of negative 4 x to the power of negative 2 y Okay, we'll take a look. Remember, only the negative denominators go, uh, only the negative indices will go into the denominator. So this is going to become, well, y is the only one that's going to stay. So it's going to be y over 2 to the power of negative 4, uh, power of positive 4, x to the power of 2. 2 to the power of 4. I know is y over that's going to be 16 x squared that stays as it is and that's the beginning of negative indices